Hello everyone, I'm just going to put together this short little video on um, how to paint in your robin. Um, I'm going to use watercolour. I've got some colours mixed up in my palette here. Um, they're they're colours that are left over from other things, but the ones that you principally need is you need a red, you need a yellow so that you can make an orange, and you need some browns and a dark colour to add the detail. Um, I've also got, because it was left over in the palette, I've got another brown in there. So I'm going to use a mixture of those paints. I'm going to use um, a number nine brush, which is quite a big brush to begin with. And then I've got a number five brush um, for putting in detail towards the end. And I'm also going to use, because I want to, to get quite an expressive um, mark with my birds, I'm also going to use a piece of, this is just a chopped up loyalty card, to spread the paint around. The other things you need are obviously some water and some kitchen paper to wipe your brush on. So I'm going to try and make this video quite short so I'm going to go through it quite quickly. I've drawn my robin in the same way that we did it in the um, session um, and then I've added a bit of detail on. I've gone over mine in ink just so that you can see it a bit clearer. So I'm going to start off by taking my big brush and I'm just going to put some water on top of the robin, not too much, just a little bit so that the paper is damp all over. I'm going to put that all over the robin because you build watercolour in layers so you want to go light and going through to dark. So from that then I'm just going to take some colours that I've got here, I'm going to try them on my piece of paper to see how dense they are so you can probably hardly see that one because it's quite light and then I'm going to put a little bit of colour just loosely, I very much like keeping the drawing tight and the painting loose. So I'm just putting that very loosely over the background of this bird to just get some bits of colour down. You can try your colour. The only way you're going to know how dense, the only way you're going to know how dense your colour is is by trying it on a piece of paper. So I'm going to put, just dropping the colour into because it's wet underneath. So just taking it and I'm just building it up and just going slightly darker but keeping it in this very soft I'm avoiding the bits here which is where the red is going to be and here where it's going to be a lighter color I'm just putting in these along the back now I want that brown to go down a bit darker now because we need some darker tones in it so I'm going to put a bit of Payne's gray with it so that just start to get brown, it's a bit darker, you might want to put some detailing down on his wings here. But as I said, this is just going to be a very loosely painted robin. And I'm going to leave that as enough for the back of him. Now what I'm going to do now is mix a grey for this, the underside that is white, I'm going to mix a grey. So you can mix a grey with red, yellow and blue basically. Um, so I've got a bit of brown in the middle of mine. I'll try and put it closely so you can see it. So that's a bit brown now. So to get it to go to more, more towards a grey, you add more blue. And again, the only way you can know what it looks like is by trying it on your piece of paper. So I think that's quite a nice grey there too. So I'm going to pop that in here. Darken it underneath where it's going underneath the wings. Put him a bit of dark grey there, a little bit of dark grey on his head here to just tone that down. And I'm going to let it come out to be lighter here. And I'm going to take a bit of tissue paper to just take that back a little bit there. So I've got the feeling of the dark underneath this side. I can actually do with having a little bit more in there. So I'm drying off my brush. And I'm going to just take a tiny bit from the dark here, try it on your paper to see what it is. So you can see that's quite dense. And I'm just going to run that along this edge here where it's going underneath the bird. And I'm going to let that bleed across to the lighter grey. I've got here, I'm just going to add a little bit more. So I'm using doing all of this with a big, with a big brush so that I'm not keeping it tight. 
Now you can let that dry at that stage, or um, I'm going to go straight in because I want, as I said, I want to keep this video short. Um, so I'm going to go in underneath where all the red is. I'm just going to put in some yellow underneath here. Watercolour paints are translucent, so you can mix them in layers on the paper. As you can see, as I'm painting this, you can probably see where my pencil lines are underneath. Um, I don't mind my pencil lines showing through with my watercolours. If you do mind, the thing to do is to rub them out first. So I've put an underlap base layer of that yellow on, and now I'm going to put some red into it. And that's this is still wet because I want the red to run into that yellow. And again, I'm not trying to paint it in very strong layers. Check what your paint colour is. Red is very strong, so you could be a little bit careful with using it. It's still quite wet. So I'm putting that red on there, and then I'm going to use this very sort of, this is uh, burnt sienna, which is an absolutely beautiful orangey browny colour. So I'm going to drop some of that in as well, because I think under there where the chin is going to be darker, it's not necessarily a bright red. And then I'm going to take my piece of card and I'm going to dip it into that and I'm going to drag it out of it so that we get a bit of scruffiness about him about the rubbin, just to give it a bit of... Sometimes when you do this, you can end up with this really manic looking robin, but don't worry, just have a play. So I'm just going to do that to just scruffy, it, scruffy him up a bit with the edge of the card. Um, now, best thing to do is to let that dry. So whilst that's drying, I'm going to back, go back in and put in a little bit of detail on his legs. So I'm just going to start off with that. Again, it's that burnt sienna. And then over the top of that, I'm going to put a bit of Payne's Grey to just give it bit of a darker feel. And I'm also going to put his eye in, just the centre of his eye. Try and leave a little bit of white around the eye because it just accentuates it a bit. And his beak. And I'm doing all this with the same size brush. If you don't feel confident using a bigger brush, just use a slightly smaller one. But don't go too small because you end up with these painterly sort of streaks in your painting. So now I'm going to darken down this brown on his wing a bit. Um, as I said, ideally I'd like to leave it dry a bit more, but um, I'm not. I'm not. I've not got time, so I'm not going to do that. So I don't want the paint too. I don't want the paint too watery. Might put a little bit. This is Alizara in crimson just to give it a ready brown. And then, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put my paintbrush on its side so that I'm just picking up bits of. If it was dry, you'd just get these really nice, I'll show you here, you just get these really nice textured effects coming from it. Mine's still a bit damp, but you can sort of. So, I'm going to put his brown in like that and I'm going to be a bit more adventurous and put some more bits of dark in here. It's always a trick with watercolour is getting it so that you, you get that nice flow with it but it doesn't get too wet. You can see here where it's bleeding across into the bird. Don't worry about it, it'll survive. So I'm going to put a bit more just to just to give it a bit of texture. So you can see I'm not painting in, I'm not painting, I'm not filling in colours, I'm just dropping bits of paint around the place. There it is, I'm just going to put a little bit over here, a little bit under his beak there. And I'm just going to put a bit of background 
round his feet whilst that dries off a little bit because what I want to do is give it a bit of a splatter. Um, you do need to wait for it to dry. So you can see so I'm brushing this on the side of my brush so you get those really nice textured feelings coming in which um, you know don't think with it. the last thing you want to do with when you're painting and this applies to whether you're painting watercolors or anything else the last thing you want to do is paint it as if you're painting your windows in your house that is really totally naff so put some of that in and as I said I would normally like to wait for this to be drier than this to do splattering but we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to splatter him now with some colours that I've already used. Don't introduce more colours into your palette than, than you absolutely have to. I've loaded the brush and I'm just going to put it against my finger like that and tap it. You can't control where this goes, but that's the that's the beauty. So that's the yellow on there. I'm going to put in some. I've used up all my burnt sienna, whatever colour this is. I think it's I think it's called light red. I'm not sure. A little bit of light red, and then just to just give it a bit of drama, we'll put a little bit of. It's about getting the right amount of paint water to your paint because it won't splatter otherwise. So just put a little bit of dark across him. And there he is, a freely expressed Robin.